ye are from beneath, I am from above, you are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. In John chapter number 8, verse number 24, Jesus makes it very, very plain. If you don't believe in who I am and what I've done, you will die in your sins. If Jesus said it, it's either true or it's not true. If it's not true, Jesus is a liar. If it is true, which I believe it is, then we have got to get the gospel out to this lost and dying world. Watch what he says in verse 25. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus saith unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning, I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true. We can know that God is true, and we can know that Jesus Christ as God is true, because he that sent me is true, and speak to the world these things which I have heard of him. Jesus spoke truth. His word speaks truth. When we speak to people about Jesus, we are speaking truth into their life. Truth is 100% knowable if you know Jesus Christ. Then he says in verse number 27, they understood not that he spake to them of the Father. This is the problem. It's not that the words of Jesus aren't true. And it's not that it's not that what Jesus said isn't true. It's just that people don't understand. How are they going to get the understanding? Holy Spirit's got to convict them. But you can put truth smack dab right in front of somebody, but they've got a heart of unbelief. They believe me not. Guess what they're going to do? They're going to understand not. Understanding is tied together. It's tied together with belief. Um, verse number 28, Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am He, and that I do nothing of Myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I always do things that please him. Watch this. And he spake these words. Many did what? Believed on him. You have two groups of people. Those that believe not and those that believe. Truth's in front of them. It's the words of Christ. You can hold this Bible in front of somebody. You can quote this Bible in front of somebody. But the choice is up to them. You're going to believe or you're going to believe not. But truth is truth can be found. It can be known. Verse number 31, And said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth, shall make you free. We talked about this earlier this morning. I'd like to expand on this thought concerning truth. We aren't set free. We are made free. There's a lot of people that have been set free from jail. They've been set free from mental institutions. They've been set free from a variety of things only to do what? Return back to what they were set free from. Man, praise the Lord, I'm set free from jail. Great, and they go out and they live, they live like the devil and then they end up back in jail. There's many repeat offenders. You don't want to end up back where you started. The Bible says the truth, it'll, it'll make you something that you weren't before. And that is absolutely and entirely free. Look at Matthew 23. I think this will help us. Look at Matthew 23.
return to that thought in a minute, but I think Matthew 23 will help us in verse number 25 we'll start. Matthew 23, verse number 25. The Bible says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within are full of extortion and excess. You have somebody that is cleaning up on the outside, but inside, it's not a pretty picture. You appear beautiful. You have a form of godliness, but there's nothing inside that's worth talking about. Uh, verse number 20, uh, 26, or 27, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you are like unto whited sepulchers, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. You look a certain way on the outside, but on the inside, it's completely different. This is not Christianity. This is Pharisaical religion. This is what religion always does. It always enslaves. Jesus always saves. Look at verse 28. Even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within you're full of hypocrisy and iniquity. And so Jesus calls this out, the outward versus the inward. Verse number 29, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchers of the righteous and say, if we have been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. They're blind. They're absolutely blind. You're made free. There's many 18-year-old boys and there's many 18-year-old girls that have been set free from mama's and dad's home at 18. Only to go back and do the stuff that they weren't allowed to do when they were in mommy's and daddy's homes. <laughs> Thank God I'm set free from these rules and I'm, I'm set free from all this stuff. You know what they're going to do? They're going to leave and they're going to return back to the stuff that their heart so truly desired. And in Matthew 23, Jesus calls out the Pharisees and says, you are not kidding me. You're trying to make the outward look a certain way, but inwardly, you're not fooling me. The outward righteousness before men might fool them, but inwardly, you don't fool me. That's what Jesus said. So all of us, myself included, our cleansing comes from Jesus Christ. And the outward must change, or the inward must change before there is any true outward change that's worth anything. Um, okay, let me do this. This is my Bible. Now, you young people, pay attention. I'm going to set my Bible on the pulpit. Okay? I'm going to set my Bible on the pulpit. Now, if we dismiss service and we leave, and I might say, uh, Josiah, can you go grab my Bible? Where is it, Dad? I set it on the pulpit. Oh, okay. And he'll run. He'll come and get it. In order for me to set my Bible on the pulpit, it has to all ready exist and you can see very clearly that it exists so I set it on my pulpit you set the glass of water on the table that glass and that water already exists and you set it on the table you couldn't be set free Do you know why because the life that you received did not exist before you received it. Jesus Christ made you into something that did not exist at all. And His truth will make anyone free. The new life that you have in Christ, it did not exist before until the moment you trusted Him. And you've got something brand and entirely new. That's freedom. That's freedom.
you've got freedom like you've never had before. That's pretty good. What are you going to do with it? You're going to live for Him? Or live for the old self? This is the old Roger. You're going to live for Him? This is the new Roger in Christ. You've been set free from you. <laughs> and you've been made into something completely entirely new. You don't want to be recreated into something. No, you have something that is entirely new like we spoke about this morning. And now you are free. You've been made free. You're not trapped in the old nature, the old self, the old ways. You've got something so much better. So much better. Go to John chapter number 1. John 1. This new birth must get a hold of this because it is the best thing that happens to any Christian. John chapter number 1, uh, verse number 1. Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Back in Psalms, it says, Thy Word is true from the beginning. Jesus Christ, capital W, the Word. The Word of God, small w, the Scriptures, was from the beginning. Both of them were. The living Word gave us the living Word. We can know Him to be true. The same was in the beginning with God. That's John 1, 2. And look at verse number 14. We talked about verse 12. I think I said it this morning. But look at verse 14 of John 1. And the Word, that's Jesus Christ, was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and what? Truth. Truth. Jesus Christ is truth. The incarnate Word gave us the scripted Word, and His scripted Word is true. We can know truth for sure. Why? Because God revealed it to us. Look at verse 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. <laughs> He is true all the time, every time. And His Word, His scripted Word, we can know truth for sure. Go to John 17. Tie some of these thoughts together we just made mention of. John 17. Watch what Jesus said. He made a promise. John 17, verse number 3. And this is life eternal, that they might know Thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom Thou hast sent. God wants you to know for sure that you have eternal life. It's not a hope so, it's a 100% no so. You can know it, because God said it. Look at verse number 8, John 17, verse number 8. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. You see that? The words. They were received, and they were believed. When you give the gospel to someone, you are asking them to receive it and believe it. Believe it or believe it and receive it. It's truth, but it's up to them. And Jesus said, you can know it for certain. You can know it for certain. Look at verse number 12. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. 
those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the Scripture might be fulfilled. Everything in Scripture matches everything in Scripture. You won't find a contradiction. You won't find an error. Man's mind might have mistaken a truth, but God is always right. And if truth is knowable, and if in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, the Bible says, Thy Word is truth. We can know that Jesus Christ, the incarnate Word, gave us the scripted Word that we can know and believe. This is why He said, this is the kind of the, the big verse I wanted to get to. You want to be sanctified? I do. I mean, we're set apart in Christ, but now our, our growth, our Christian growth, I want to continue to grow in sanctification. So he says, sanctify them through thy truth. Well, what's that? Thy word is truth. What do you need to be soaked with? What do I need to be soaked with? Give me more truth. Give me more truth. We're not getting to the doctrine of inspiration and preservation tonight. But I'll say this, if this book isn't inspired and this book hasn't been preserved, we can't 100% know that what's in here is truth. We only got to hope so. If thy word is truth, where is it? Thy word is truth. I'm telling you, you'll grow as a Christian the more you dig in this book. It's a big book. We'll be digging for a long time. But thy word is truth. You can 100, you can for sure, for certain, tell someone, look, I know what I've got is true. It's in God's word. It's in God's word. And he's always right. He's always truthful. People say they don't believe in absolutes. If you ask somebody, do you believe that God could reveal truth to you in such a way that you can know it for certain. Ask a lost person that. Do you believe God can reveal truth to you or to me in such a way that I can know it 100%? This is a guy that doesn't believe in absolute truth, a lost person. You ask him that question. You know what he'll say to you? He either will say yes or no. So you ask him, are you absolutely sure about that? Well, wait, I guess I'm not. <laughs> the guy that doesn't believe in absolute truth, he's caught on an illogical circle of reasoning. But I get off that circle of uncertainty when I appeal to a higher, create, our Creator God. How can you know anything for sure? God has to reveal it to you. Well, I just think, how do you know that your thinking is correct? The assumptions that you make, how do you know that you can trust them? The way you reason things out, how do you know you can trust your reasoning? What if your reasoning is flawed? Man, I never thought about these things. Yeah, thy word is truth. The thing is, you do know things. The thing is, I do know things. We do. Where does that come from? It has to come from God. And God has decided to reveal truth to us in such a way that we can know it for certain. We have a conscience, His creation, and then His word. All right, let's move on. Let's move on. Um, John 18. John 18. Look at verse... Number 37. John 18, verse 37. I believe we briefly touched on this. I'll touch on it again. I think it's important. John 18, 37. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Jesus just dealt with 
Peter was a denier. You know what he used? Words. You know what those words were? He was, he was, a deni he was untruthful. Um, Judas, betrayer. You know what he did? He betrayed with his words. His words weren't truthful. By the time he gets to Pilate, he's standing in front of Pilate and he says, Oh, Pilate, here I am. I'm not like those fellows. I am. You're... He was staring truth right in the face. He heard the word of truth. And that'd be great to live during the times that Jesus walked this earth, but how does that play out for us? Anybody know what happened in 1963? The public school system decided to throw out truth. You know what boys used to do and girls used to do prior to 1963? The teacher says, the teacher would say to them this, uh, it's your turn, little Johnny, to read the Bible today. In 1963, the public school system threw out truth. It was right in front of them, and they threw it out. Every single child that would go to public school would open up a King James Bible every morning, and they'd have a devotional. They'd have prayer time. You know what's wrong with the public school system? They threw out truth. And now kids go to school, and they learn, you can just make God into whoever you want. Matter of fact, why don't you just make yourself into a God? You're not really who you think you are. Just imagine you're someone else. Where does that come from? It comes from throwing away truth. You think in 1963, any parent thought that in 2023, you would have boys thinking that they're girls and girls thinking that they're cats and teachers putting kitty litter boxes in the school? You think any parent in 1963 or 4 thought that? How did we get to this place? Because they threw out truth. That's why. And you throw out truth, you're going to come up with all sorts of foolishness. And we can't do that. We cannot do that. 1 Thessalonians 2. 1 Thessalonians 2. Verse number 13. 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 13. The Bible says, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which ye heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God. God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe, 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 believe. And the public school system has done a great job at getting children and parents to accept books that are rewritten every one or two or three years. And nothing is absolute anymore. And they've gotten them to accept the words of men as truth. And God says, no, my word is truth. Accept my words and believe in me. And until we get our nation back to the word of God, we are going to continue to sink deeper and deeper and deeper. Just like 1 Timothy 3 tells us, waxing worse and worse and worse. 1 Thessalonians 5. The objections you'll get from people say, well, that's just your, your opinion. You, you Bible thumpers. I don't know. I don't know what it means to thump your Bible, but I don't think I've... Uh, what is that supposed to mean? You just keep hitting somebody with the Bible. I've never hit anybody with my Bible. Have you? <laughs> well, prove it. Prove it. So how do you test truth? Biblically, how do you test it? 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5, verse number 21. There's three ways that the Scripture tells us to test truth. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse number 25, it says, Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. How you test truth is by, you test it by searching these Scriptures. 
and proving whether or not they line up with the Scriptures. Well, Brother Jimmy, I disagree with you on this. Fine. Don't look at me as the authority. I've got no authority. I'm trying to preach from the authoritative book so that you can search it and prove it. If I'm wrong, prove me wrong with the Scriptures. I'll be glad to repent. But don't come up with some crazy idea of spaghetti monsters or aliens and say, well, that's just as valid. No, it's not, because it's not in the Scriptures. <laughs> and I'm not talking about some obscure passage in Isaiah or Ezekiel or anything like that. I'm talking about some real basic fundamental truths. You've got to be able to search it. So you test, you test truth by proving it in Scripture. 2 Timothy 2. The second way that you test truth, 2 Timothy 2, look at verse number 15. The second way you test truth, and you, you've got to do this, I do as well, is the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto your family. Nope. Unto your preacher. Nope. Unto your Christian friends. Nope. Unto God. God. You prove truth by studying the Scriptures. And you become a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You, 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 can, you can test truth by proving it through Scripture, by studying the Scriptures, and then lastly, there's the third way. It's found in Colossians chapter number 1. Turn back in your Bible and you'll come to the book of Colossians and it's the first chapter. You prove things. Searching the Scriptures, studying the Scriptures. Colossians 1 verse 23 says, watch it, you can test truth by being settled in the Scriptures. If you continue in the faith, Colossians 1.23, grounded in what? Settled. And be not what? Moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard and which was preached, every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. You can, you can test truth by being settled in it and grounded in it. Uh, Brother Eric studying more electrical things and he's going to be learning about, I was asking him an electrical question the other day about a voltage. He said, oh, that's going to, probably going to be on the test. So he's studying these things because you got to figure out how to get to a ground. You got to figure out what grounds you so you don't get hurt. This is our ground. This is your family's ground. This is our church's ground. We're settled and grounded in it. And uh, Brother Roger, we might have some opinions about some things and we might, we're free and at liberty to disagree on those opinions because we're not preaching our opinion. We want to know what God says. And we got to stick with that. Now, we'll finish with this. Go to 1 Timothy 4 and 1 Corinthians 14. And we'll finish with these these two verses. And we'll finish up. 1 Corinthians 4. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians 14. And 1 Timothy 4. I think we've got that right. Is it verse... Okay. You've heard, have you used this saying? You, man, some, some things you see and you can't unsee. And you wish you could. When you get hit with truth smack dab in the face from God's Word, once you see it, you'll never unsee it. That's how powerful this book should be and God's Word should be. Once you see it, you're going to have a choice. Trust it or toss it. Receive it or reject it. 
I wrote down this Bible verse. Back in the Old Testament, the prophet Hosea said, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because they asked, uh, they, they've rejected knowledge. The knowledge was in front of them, but they rejected the knowledge. Parents, you tell your child, here's some knowledge. Follow this knowledge. They reject it and go do something stupid. It was right in front of them. They choose to reject it. Then he says, the prophet tells them, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no more, uh, no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. The prophet said, here's knowledge. You want to reject it? God's going to reject you. And worse off, your children are going to suffer for it. Why are we at the point in America now when parents are scared to death to send their kids to public school? Because we have a nation of parents who have rejected God's truth. That's why. And the result is our children are suffering because they threw this book away. You know, Christian martyrs died for this book. We have a nation of Americans who could care less. They could care less. They got more trust in a science textbook than they do in the Word of God. It's an awful thing for a nation. We're not a free nation. I don't mean to confuse anyone, but we are not a free nation. We have forgotten God and we are enslaved to the world system of the devil. We are free in Christ. But this government makes us think we're free. We are not a free people. We might have some more freedoms than someone living in North Korea, I'll grant you that. I'm no historian and I'm no expert on uh, uh, anthropology. But when I look out and see the foolishness that people are getting into, all that tells me is they are not free. They are enslaved to sin and the devil and the world system. Government says, I'll give you free butter and cheese. They all show up. Government says, I'll give you free money. I'll just drop it right in your account electronically. Everybody receives it and show up. And Jesus Christ says, I will offer you eternal life. You will be free from sin and you can spend eternity with me. People turn right the other way. Nobody's fixing our country except Jesus Christ and the return to truth. God help our church to not forget truth. Well, got off on some preaching where we were supposed to be. We'll finish up on these verses. 1 John 4. 1 John 4. Uh, 1 Timothy 4. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 1 Timothy 4. I already asked you to turn there. The Bible says in verse 10, For therefore, 1 Timothy 4, verse 10. For therefore we both labor, labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. These things command and teach. Why do we command truth? Why do we teach truth? Because it is knowable. And it's found in this book. In 1 John 2, we're not going to stand, uh, turn there, but it talks about, I write unto you. And it's to believers talking about how that they, if, they, if they keep His commandments, if you love God, you show, you show it by keeping His commandments. How can you keep God's commandments if you don't know what they are? Why would you keep a commandment if you don't even believe that it's true? I doubt Dennis is going to go home after church today and when he's driving home, uh, he's going to come to a red light and you know, uh, his wife is going to look over to him and say, are you, are, you, are you going to slow down? We're kind of getting close to the red light. You, you might want to put the brake on. No, I don't believe the brake works. Uh, no, you, you better... The manual says that you're commanded to put your foot on the brake or the car's not going to stop. Nah. I don't believe it. Okay. <laughs> Told you so. 
That's life with a lot of Christians. Bible says, Bible says, Bible says, no it don't. I got my own way. You're a legalist. Eh. You're old. You're the... Okay. And you got a lot of people making a train wreck of their life. It amazes me. It amazes me. There's some people that say they're Christians and they can figure out they got a doctrinal position on the end times. They got a doctrinal position on everything in the Bible except they can't stay out of the bar on Friday night. You might consider starting with something a lot simpler than eschatology. And then they make a train wreck out of their life because they won't believe the Word of God. We've got to command it and teach it so people can see it right in front of them. Okay, last thing, and we got to get this thought done. We got to get this thought done. 1 Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 37. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Someone tells you that they're a prophet or they got something for you, they're real super spiritual, you better have them open up the Word of God and show it to you so that you can prove it, study it, and either settle or get, on, or get out of it. That's how you're going to test truth. Now, does the Word of God show you everything that there is to learn, to know? That's the question. Does the Word of God, you call out the answer, does the Word of God have everything there is to know? What would you young people say, yes or no? All right, the answer is no. The Word of God doesn't have everything there is to know. Go to John chapter 21. John 21, verse 25. I'll read it if you're not there. If you do there, you just catch up with me. John 21, verse 25, it says, And there are also many other things which, which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written, everyone, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. And it ends with, Amen. The Word of God doesn't have everything there is to know. There aren't enough books to cover it. <laughs> And you certainly won't know how, you certainly won't figure out how to plumb a building or fix your car in the Word of God. So now let me ask you this final question. Does the Word of God give us everything we need to know? That's right, the answer is yes, it does. It doesn't give us everything there is to know, it gives us everything that we need to know. You ever say to somebody, do I really need to know this? <laughs> God says, look, you can't handle 66 books, let alone everything in the world. Go to 2 Peter. <laughs> I mean, do I really have to suffer through this? 2 Peter. 2 Peter, chapter number 1. 2 Peter, chapter number 1. Bible says in verse number 3, According as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. You know what you need to know? And you know what the Bible has? Truth on all things pertaining to this, life and godliness. You want to know about those two things? You'll find everything you need to know in this book. Through the knowledge of Him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Not everything there is to know, everything you need to know to, to live a life unto godliness. You can find it.